Okay, in this question, we have a ring. This is the ring, a nice ring, and in the ring I have current, okay? This is the current, and since the radius of the ring is B, okay? You see it? Since the radius of the ring is B, I'm gonna call this current also B, okay? IB, not to get confused, okay? Good, and I have also a ring over here with the different radius A. They concentric, okay? Good. And now, and uh, uh, also another point, I want to say that B is much larger than A. What this mean? B is much larger than A. It means that if A is one, B is hundred thousands. There's no such a thing like infinity, right, in physics. It just means that this is really big compared to that, right? This is an ant, this is a human in sizes, okay? That's the concept. So if I am the ring, and I look at this small ring, what I actually see? I see a point, I see a dot, a small thing, right? This is the concept, okay? Whenever you see this, okay? Good, good. So uh, what's happening is somebody take this ring and start to lift it up, okay? To take it out, okay? And what I want to ask you is, what's gonna happen inside this ring? First of all, the outer ring, right, produce already magnetic. magnetic fields. Good. So we have here inside the ring some magnetic fields, right? What is the magnetic field of a ring? I want you to have this in your sheet uh, formula, okay? The magnetic field, you can find it using which law? You can do it. Use biosafar. Pi, we did it for two different rings, right? Two half rings in the first question. You can do it for zero till two pi, and I can make your life really hard and also talk about the height, right? So let's give you the more formula equation, okay? And by the way, the height would just make this thing really ugly. That's all, okay? RdB, right? But you can still solve it. So the equation is IB, B square, my uh, mu node to b squared plus the height above the ring okay so what happened what happened to the ring through time so the magnetic field right now was some value right and then what's going on when i take it up i taking this one in z this is going to be the z direction Z, what's happening? This is the ring. I take it with me. I am on the other side of the campus. I don't know there is a ring, okay? Because the distance is so much far away, okay? So infinity B zero, okay? But we have something continuity between this point to that point. So we actually have a drop in the magnetic field, right? So good. So if I'm gonna have some change in the magnetic field, okay? I actually, let's draw this thing. E dot DL, right? Equal minus D phi B DT, right? This equation. So what is phi B, remind me? What is a flux? Exactly, flux is just saying how much of this property actually go through some area. That's the concept. Flux is actually a concept that comes from fluid, fluid mechanics. Okay, rain going, falling down. Okay, that's the idea of flux. So people in the past thought that electromagnetism is a fluid. That's the reason we say resistors, current, they thought it's an invisible fluid. Instead of H2O, we have electrons, okay? That was the concept, that's the reason we have the, all this kind of language. So flux, phi B, is equal to the integral of the property that actually is written right here, b dot da. And I want you to notice that we have here dot. What does the dot say? Direction matter, okay? If I'm gonna have a bucket of water and I want to take water from the clouds and I'm gonna put the bucket that way. How much flux I gonna get? Nothing, okay? So the angle is important. And here you know it's not that, okay, of course this one. But if you build a solar panel, 
the angle is critical, okay? This angle compared to that angle, for one year, it's an insane amount of energy, okay? So that's the reason we have this dot, okay? So what happened? When this term, okay? So Faraday question, Faraday question, actually, what we, we said that this is, what unit? Like yes, yeah, it's, it's a volt. Okay, this is a volt, right? So a volt would produce on this ring if the flux of the ring is actually what's gonna do? Change. If it's gonna change in time. If something gonna happen through time to this loop, the loop of this ring, yeah? So I'm gonna have energy. So what are the methods to actually change the flux? I can change the size of the ring, right? I can actually change the direction. I have the bucket, hop, hop, hop. I can do this kind of thing, right? And I can also change the magnetic field, which this is the case in our place, right? In our question. In our question, this thing is taking away. So the ring said, oh my God, I feel changing in flux. So I produce energy. If, and if this ring has some resistance R, what's gonna be the current in the ring? Okay? And what's really good about Faraday equation, it has so much thing that we already study. We have a co uh, circuits, right? We need to use Ohm's law. We have a magnetic field, we have your fluxes, and we have your, a fuck up a geometry that can be happen, right? Like there's so many questions you can ask about it. So this is a really interesting question, great. But now they ask you something else. They ask you how much charge, how much charge, how much charge delta Q has been moving inside these rings when I take this ring from here until far away as I want? Infinity, the other side of the campus, okay? So that was the question. How much charge actually moved inside this ring, okay? Good, so let's try to solve that. Okay, so let's do, okay, we can leave this here. So what we know, we know that, what we know about charges, how we can get to this concept? Usually we're not talking about charges, we're talking about Current. So we know that the current is actually by definition the change in Q divided by the change in time. And we also can say something about the current from here. What we can say about it? Epsilon. Exactly. We know Ohm's law. Ohm's law state that the energy that I have divided by how much the circuit resists flow of energy is the current. That's the concept, right? And we also know what is the current. What is the, uh, not current, the voltage. How much energy I would produce. You know, this concept is what actually drives all the systems of our life. Like right now, someone in the electric company actually taking some ring in a magnetic field and swivel it. That's the whole thing. This is the turbine. And if it's moving, the flux is changing, and I gain energy. That's the way we live. Winds, right? Water, a steam engine. Steam engine just takes steams, heat it with burn uh, woods, right? And then turn it around. And then we have energy. Voltage. Voltage is energy, right? That's a concept. So this what equal to what? This concept is actually one R multiply. This is this by this term, right? Right, this term, which is d phi b to dt. Right, this concept. Okay, I'm going to move to this side of the board. So, the trick in these kind of questions, okay, I'm going to write. What we, have. we have dq dt equal to one over r multiply d phi b dt. You see it? You see it? So most of the time in Faraday, you need to find this flux. And this is pain in the ass. It's really, really hard to find the flux. What is the flux in our case? Is phi B, B, oh my God, okay? This thing, dot dA, and this is changing in time, right? The angle change in time? 
No. So instead of writing the dot, in our case, I can write this, right? Multiply by one. It's not the game here, okay? The area changing in time? What is the area? It's one over d, uh, sorry, it's pi, it's a circuit, right? Pi a squared. So I can actually say that I have here dA, right? This is dA, which is equal to pi a squared, good, good. And I do have a derivative of time only of dB to dt. You see it? So all our problem actually reduced to dq dt equal to 1 over r. Let's write here pi a squared a square db to dt right and i want you to notice that the electric uh, sorry the magnetic field inside this this uh, um, ring is actually one value is this value okay why because it's in the center of the big ring it see it as a dot really small so this approximation is good for us okay I want to plug it in and I want to derive this by time and this is a problem okay to derive this by time I'm gonna die in the way okay it's really hard but what they ask me they don't ask me about the current they ask me about the change in charge how can I get rid of the time in this equation Exactly, I can do integration by time. So if I'm going to do here an integration by time, okay, a camera with me. If I'm going to do integration of time, of course I need to do it on both sides. I can't do it on one side and I need to state what are the boundaries of the integral and have the same boundaries on each side. So what I actually going to have is that I have integral of dq divided by dt on dt, right? That's what I did here. You see it? And what are the boundaries? Let's do t equals zero to t equal a really far away, okay? To t, some general t, okay? Really a long time pass. And what I need to do, this is a constant. I can write them here, pi a squared divided by r, integral from time equals zero to general time, and I have here db, dt, dt, right? So what I see here, this falling with that, you see it? And now the integral is just asking, sum up all the differences of the charges, which mean, okay, it's calculating just q final minus q initial, right? Which is actually delta q. Agreed? This is clear? Yeah? Okay, what's happening in this side? In this side, this constant doesn't change, R, but this die with that, which means here we have B final minus B initial. What does it mean? It means B at location Z equal infinity, that's what they ask, minus B at the beginning, right? And, and don't forget to make it a flux pi a baribua, right, pi a squared, sorry, divided by, I want to do it a units of charge, divided by r, okay? So this thing I can calculate really easily, right, because I have the formula that you had in the, your paper sheet. This at time zero equal to what? Well, let's start with that, that's easy. Okay, infinity, it's looking scary, but in physics too, you know that infinity, it's really far away. I don't feel anything, I don't see anyone, right? So this equal to zero. This was easy, right? But what is this? Just plug in z equal to zero, right? In the equation that we have. And this is going to give us minus mu nod i b to b. So this multiplied by that going to give us that the total change in charge is actually 2b r pi a square mu z i b okay 
So this is the total amount of charge that change. What was the trick here? The, yes? Is there a mistake with the B, the formula? Because you had B squared over B squared. Ah, no, never mind. It's okay, here. good, okay. So what was the trick here? The trick was that I had something that changing in time on one side, but I had something that changed in time on the other side. So I can cancel the thing that changed in time, okay, by using the integral. That was the trick here. You can do it all the way, right, and solve the integral, but that was a pain in the ass. It was really hard. Yes? Yes, this talking about the direction of the charge. It's move at that direction the current or that direction. Ah, here? You mean. Uh, what? Uh, which? Ah, here? You mean that uh, I didn't have the minus here? Yeah, it should be a minus here. Yeah. Okay? In the s final solution on the question, you need to see if they are talking. That's my trick, okay? I look at the, at the end result and I see if they're talking about plus and minuses or it's just magnitude. If it's just the magnitude, forget about it, okay? Forget about the minus, it's okay. If you want to be completely corrected, political correct, for the minus all the way, okay? But in my, in my, in my uh, head, I think about time consuming, okay? I want you to move fast and have time to the harder questions, okay? So that was the tutorial for today, okay? Uh, that should prepare the exam. I hope that I give you some ideas how to approach equation. I'm just gonna summarize it a little bit. So if they ask you about fields, fields, you need to ask yourself, okay, it's a field question, okay? It's not capacitor, it's not inductor, it's not resistor, they want me to find field. Which one is it? Magnetic or electric? After they told us, you have two options right now in the tree. Okay, it's gonna be with symmetry, inf I mean infinite symmetry, or without symmetry, okay? Without symmetry, it means fucked up, Coulomb's law, bio savoir, a really mathematical question. If they're gonna say it's infinity, you could probably use Ampere's law or Gauss's law, life or wonderful. If the question is not about that, the question can be on the circuits, and you need to understand how capacitor, inductor, and resistors behave by themselves. If they're gonna mix them up, it's gonna be a circuit question. And then probably Faraday is the solution, okay? Depends who are the component in the game, okay? And the last part that we didn't have time to cover, it's about, uh, it's about the waves phenomena, but I feel that the waves uh, the waves tutorial was each one separated. It was a closed thing. It regards magnetic and electromagnetism, which was many topics that we needed to cover and say how they talk to each other, okay? So I like to look at the course like electromagnetism, strings, standing wave, which is a subject by itself. Then we have a EMR, electromagnetic radiation, which we talked about, and then we have a specific experiment using electromagnetic wave, which is the two-slit experiment. This is all the class, okay? So that's what I want you to have in mind tomorrow, tomorrow? Yeah, no, two days from now in the exam. Okay, tomorrow it's 1M physics, so yeah. Uh, good luck, guys. Thank you so much for coming and studying physics. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah.